In this video, we're going to talk about your user profile and how to add other users to your library's website. So as usual, we're starting off here on the dashboard. In this case, we're going to go ahead and select users from the menu on the left. Now, there's several things here, and this is sort of an interface that you'll start to see over and over again. It'll be very similar when we get to posts and also when we get to pages. What we have here is a list of the users that are currently logged into, or excuse me, the users that currently have accounts on your website. Now, in this example website, we have two accounts, one for our comp team here at the commission and one for me, and my username here is Michael Sowers. When you first sign into your website, you will probably also see two users, one being me, probably as, as M. Sowers instead of Michael Sowers, and an account that I have set up for you. Now, uh, you're completely welcome to delete my account. I still have access as the administrator to the whole system, or you can leave me there. It, it doesn't really matter in this case. Um, you'll see the usernames for each of them, uh, a full name, which I'll show you how to get that in a moment. Um, each user on your system has to have a unique email address. So if you've got one email address for all of your library staff, um, if you want more than one person to have access to your account, you, each person is going to have to have their own email address. That can be Gmail, Yahoo Mail, whatever. It doesn't have to be a library's email address. Um, you'll also see the role that the person has here, and we'll talk about those roles in a moment, but you will be an administrator, and every site has to have at least one administrator, and then how many posts each of those uh, users have written currently. Now, you'll see that um, as I hover each over each of these, you can see this edit and delete appear, and in my case, you can just see edit but not delete. That's because you can't delete yourself. Okay, so that's one thing to keep in mind. Um, so in this case, I'm going to use me as the example. I'm going to go ahead and edit my account, and I'm going to get to this personal profile options screen. And there are several things you can do here, and as you'll see with other videos that I'm going to do, I'm going to make recommendations as to some things you should do, some things I really want you to do, and some things uh, that you should probably just uh, leave alone, for, for lack of a better term. Um, this first one is the visual editor. Um, this is something we'll cover in other videos, but there's a visual editor and there's a code editor. Um, checking this box turns off the visual means you have to know code in order to be able to write content. Chances are you don't want to do that. I know code and I don't even do that. Um, you can change this color scheme for administers excuse me, administrative accounts. Um, so for example, if you want to know that you're logged in as an administrator, you could change it to say the sunrise theme, and then you get different colored menus and things like that. This is completely up to you. Um, keyboard shortcuts for comment moderation. We'll talk more about comment moderation later. Um, this is something you can turn on if you want. If you're really a keyboard junkie, feel free to, to use them, but um, I do, personally, I don't use them. Um, and then show toolbar when viewing site. The toolbar is this gray, or excuse me, this black bar across the top where it's got my username in it, what site I'm using, things like that. This is something that by default this is checked, and so when you are viewing your library's website but are also logged into WordPress, you'll see this black bar. Okay. None of your patrons will ever see this because they will never be logged into your site. This is a question of whether you want to see this while you're logged into your site or not. My recommendation, just leave this alone. If you later find it annoying, you can come back here and turn it off. But by default, I think pretty much everybody leaves it on. Okay, so scrolling down just a little bit. Now, here are some things you definitely want to customize for yourself and have any new users you add customized for themselves. First section is username. Can't change this. Once the username's set, that's set. But you do want to fill in your first name here and your last name here. Because, you know, especially if your username is J. Smith, nobody wants to see J. Smith. They want to see John Smith. Okay? Um, the nickname, so now here's, I put in Michael and Sowers is my first name and last name. But let's say, you know, my nickname is Mech. Okay? I can put that put that in. Uh, really, I don't have a nickname, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave this as my full name once again. Now, the the next one, and this one is is rather important, is this display name publicly as. And now that I filled in these options, I have several choices. I can use my username, my first name, my last name, my first name and last name, or my last name, first name. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and pick first name, last name. 
Um, what is going on here is when people write content on your site, when your staff write content, when you write content on your site, it's going to say posted by. It's going to say who it's created. And in my case, it's now going to say Michael Sowers. Okay. Now, if you want to be a little less formal and you have a Michael, a Mary, and a Susan, you can have everybody say, uh, have it say just their first name. So we can say, you know, uh, posted by Susan. Okay. This is completely up to you, but I do recommend using something other than your username. Things like J. Smith and, and S. Jones just don't really mean anything to your patrons. Scrolling down a little further, you can uh, uh, fill in your email address. And in fact, this should be filled in for you by default. Uh, every account does have to have, as I mentioned, an email address attached to it. Uh, probably the most useful item here is if the, your email address changes. Um, if you have a personal website and you want to fill that in, you're welcome to do that. Again, probably not necessary for a library website. Uh, biographical info, you can also fill this in. Again, completely optional, completely up to you. Patrons, chances are, won't ever see this anyways. So in most cases, people leave this blank. Now, one thing you do want to do down here is if you want to change your password. Now, this is not if you've forgotten your password. If you've forgotten your password, there's a lost your password link on the login screen and you want to use that. This is a case where I know what my password is, but I've decided it's it's a bad password or I just want to change it, make it a little stronger, something like that. This is where you can type in your new password and repeat that new password here. And this strength indicator will tell you it'll be like red if it's a bad password, yellow if it's an okay password, or green if it's a really great password. Okay. Um, now, something you're going to hear me say over and over again, on any of these settings pages, there's usually going to be some sort of blue button that says update or save changes. If you've changed anything on this screen and you just go to another screen, the changes won't be kept. You have to click, in this case, update profile, and now you will see that my changes have been saved. Okay. So when you first get logged in, if you're a new user, please go ahead and, and make these customizations. Now. If you're the administrator of the site, the person in charge, generally the library director, but it doesn't have to be, you might want to add other users to your um, library's website. For example, if you have staff who are also going to be writing content. In this case, what we can do is under users over on the left, we can click add new. And what here is you have a single screen in which you need to fill in pretty much most, if not all of this information. Okay, you'll see a few things here are listed as required and a few things are optional. So let's say, for example, we do have a John Smith on staff and we want John to be able to post content. So I'm going to go ahead and give him a username of J Smith. And I'm going to say that his uh, um, email address is john.smith at nebraska.gov. And now I can fill in his first name and last name if I want to. Um, he can always go ahead and customize that later on his profile page like I just showed. If he has his own website, we can link to that, completely optional. And then we do need to give John a password. So you're going to fill in a nice, good, strong password, and then you're going to repeat that good, strong password again. Um, notice again, we also have that strength indicator, so take a look at that. Um, you can then send John automatically an email with his new password in it. This is iffy from a security standpoint, i got to be honest with you, because what you're going to do is you're going to set a nice good password and then you're going to email it to someone. And that is actually very insecure. So what I would suggest, assuming you know, you're going to see John tomorrow, something like that, I would say, John, hey, I gave you an account. Here is your password. Write it down on a piece of paper. Or have him you know, memorize it and eat it when he's done or throw it in a shredder or something like that. Um, so you, know, you can use this for convenience, but I do want to highlight that it isn't exactly the most secure solution in the world. Okay, now the last thing you want to do before you add new users, you need to choose a role for John. Okay, you have five choices, subscriber, contributor, author, editor, and administrator. These are from kind of the lowest level of permissions to the highest levels of permissions. So let me just briefly kind of describe to you what each of these means. A subscriber basically means that the person can only read content on the website. Okay. Now, you would not use this for a library website. This is really designed for when you set up a, a, uh, a website that only users can read if they create an account and log in. We're not going to do that. We want our website to be public. So we're not going to set John as a subscriber. We could set John as a contributor. 
a contributor is allowed to write content um, like new posts, but it must be approved by someone else, either an editor or an administrator before it shows up on the website. Okay. So let's say, you know, John is a part-timer. Uh, you want him to be able to post blog, uh, content to the blog, but uh, you want somebody to just kind of give a quick check and make sure it's okay before that post goes up for anybody in the world to read. You could set John as a contributor. Setting John as an author means John can write new blog posts and they don't need approval, but John can't do anything past that. So could John can log in, hey, here's what's going on in the library this week, click publish, and then everybody can read it without any approval. Okay. But John cannot do other things that an editor or an administrator can do. So what can an editor do? An editor can create content, posts, and pages, but an editor can also edit and control the content that other people have created. So an editor is somebody who can approve the uh, contribution of a contributor. An editor could go in and fix a spelling error in an author's blog post. Um, an editor could delete a previous blog post uh, that you've decided should not be up on the website. So editors have a lot of power, but what editors can't do is they can't change the site as a whole. Those are administrators. Okay? And like I said before, you have to have at least one administrator in every site. The administrator can do things like changing the look and feel of the website, can edit, delete, and create any content they want. Uh, they can deal with comments. Um, editors can also deal with comments. We'll talk more about that in the comments video. Um, administrators can add new users and remove users from the website. Okay? Um, administrators can change all of the settings that we'll talk about in future videos and the settings menu. Okay. There's a lot of things that administrators can't do. The only two things administrators can't do is run updates and install plugins. Um, oh, and install themes. We'll talk about each of those. Those are three things. Um, up updates, installing plugins, and installing themes are things that only I can do as the network administrator, as the person who's running the whole show. So let's say in this case, John is somebody that we want to be able to create content. We trust John that um, John can make sure other people have, are doing things right, but we, would, we don't want John to give John the ability to change the site as a whole. We're gonna go ahead and set him as an editor. Okay, what we would then do at this point is we would click add new user, which I'm not gonna do because this is not a real email address. Okay, and we click add new user. John would be added to the system. John will get an email with or without the password, depending on how you check the send password box, that John must then click on the URL in that email to confirm his account. So you can't make up a, a fake email address. You've got to get, put in John's real mail, email address. So you fill this in, you click add new user, John gets an email that says, hey, you've been added as a new user, click this link to confirm your email address, and then John will be listed, if I go back to the all users, John would now be listed as a user here in my uh, user list. Okay, the last thing I want to talk about on this screen is, is bulk actions. And this is again something that you'll see available to you on, on other pages as we go through these videos. Um, for example, if I wanted to, if I had four staff people that I had as editors, I could check those four names and then say change role to authors because I want to demote them for some reason. Um, the bulk actions, also I can delete people by bulk. Bulk actions are things that you probably won't do with users a lot because chances are your library is not going to have a lot of users. So that's users. That's uh, how to uh, edit things in your profile. Uh, how to add new users to your website quickly there how to delete users from your website and then when you do add new users make sure they come in and edit their profile to get their name right and uh, how they want their name displayed thanks for watching